Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel, Oxid Magic, and it's Jordan here, and boy, oh boy, do I have a deck for today. As most of you will know that in modern, I am currently enjoying the delights of Norin Sisters, and the fun and games that you get to have with it. Oh, the joys, how I love it. Now, with obviously the new release set, Ixalan, I was looking for ways to sort of spread my wings, make my own sort of deck, see how I can play and uh, not try and do all the meta guys are up to. And I've come up with what I think is a pretty spicy brew. So, without further ado, let's just get straight into it to token dot deck baby. So, basically as you can tell from the title, all this deck is aiming to do is produce tokens. Now, the main reason why I'm looking to do this is because I just want to go wide with tokens, uh, this allows us to have nice decent blockers, but not only that, we are using enchantments to get extra ones. So, the two main functions of this deck, we have Orketra's Monument and Anointed Procession. The benefit with Orketra's Monument is basically any time we cast a creature spell, we get to create a 1-1 one, one warrior token with Vigilance. Now, the benefit we've also got with Anointed Procession is whenever we create a token, we get to create double. So effectively, if we're going to create one token, we get to create two. So the monument, every time we have an anointed procession on the board, will allow us to create two tokens. And basically, everything else in the deck allows us to get tokens. So, beginning with some of the lower cost creatures, we have Sacred Cat. This is the 1-1 one, one Life Linker for one. And the benefit we get is that it can embalm for one, which means that it can exile itself from the graveyard and become a 1-1 one, one creature token itself. Benefit with this is of course that we can create two 1-1 one, one life linkers with anointing procession on the board. Uh, moving into more token generation, we have Steward of Solidarity. This is a 2-drop which for, is a 2-2 two, two, and you can tap and exert it to create a 1-1 one, one white warrior token creature as well. Then have Legion's Landing, one of the new Ixalan cards, which when it ends the battlefield, it creates a 1-1 one, one vampire, the creature token is with lifelink, and if you attack with three or more creatures, it then transforms into Adanto the first fort, which taps out a white mana, or it can pay two and a white and tap it to create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink. So we can effectively get more tokens out of it for blockers, for various things like that. Then moving on, we have Orketra the True, the goddess herself, the 3 6 with double strike and indestructible. And it can't attack a block unless you have three or more creatures, but you can also sink mana into her for four and create 1 1 white vigilance warriors. So, again, rather sweet. We then have a last token generation style creature. We have a Crested Sunmare. Because we've got all this lifelink flying around, we get to trigger and create horses. And the benefit is, is that this is a horse lord and gets all out of a horse's indestructible. Means that if those pesky board wipes turn up, you should be safe. Now, we've generated all these tokens. What is our big payoff? So the big payoff in the deck itself is we have Avon Wind Guide and Favourable Winds. Now, Avon Wind Guide itself is a creature, and for four mana, it's a 2-3 with Flying and Vigilance, but the benefit it has is that creature tokens you control gain Flying and Vigilance. Now, that's nothing special on its own, but Favourable Winds, when it's on the battlefield, gives all our creatures that we control with Flying plus one plus one. So suddenly, our 1-1 one, one blockers can go up to 2-2s, two even 3-3s. Three, so late game, this is deadly you can swing for lethal quite nicely so basically what this deck wants to do is go wide you'll generally get ignored by the world one ones and the tokens they'll tend to ignore them most of the time and then you swing for lethal uh other little payoff that we have in the deck is that because we are running so many tokens is we have a two of anointing priest which is whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under our control we get one life. So this is very much like a sister, but it's a half sister really, let's be honest. So this is the stepsister of the family, nobody likes, you know, it's sort of that sort of aspect. But anyway, so benefit we're gaining all this life as well is uh, it can also embalm itself and come back late game. So if we just want to sort of get a big life gain advantage, we can do, so it's really sweet. So 
Other things in the deck that we like to focus on uh, is we have Aerial Responder. This is a good 3 drop. Uh, it's a 2-3 with Vigilance and Lifelink. So this itself gets buffed by Favorable Winds quite nicely and can gain us quite a nice bit of life. We are also running Cloudblazer. Uh, basically, for 5 mana, we are getting yeah, the battlefield. We get to draw 2 cards and get 2 life. It is the Mini Mool Drifter. <laughs> because I am a scrub and I can't read a deck list, I've forgotten one card. We are running a couple of sensor. Uh, this is obviously to help um, with the early game establishment and some possible spot removal to protect the Avon Wing Guide initially. And worst case scenario, you get to draw a card off. So anyway, let's get back to the deck deck. <laughs> Moving on into the last final cards of the deck before we get to lands is we have Jace Cutting Castaway. Benefit with this is that this has a, a mini combo with Anointed Procession. If you already have a Anointed Procession now and you manage to somehow, by miracle, ultimate Jace, uh, you get to create four copies instead of just the normal two, which can then obviously double up even more tokens. So theoretically, you can get eight tokens out of the ultimate. Um, and when I say the tokens, I'm talking, of course, about the Phantasms. And again, these can get Vigilance and Flying from the Avon Wing Guy, which in turn can get buffed up by Favorable Winds. So there's a bit of a weird combo going in with that. You can't immediately swing. There is no enchantment that gives us all haste, unfortunately. But you never know. They might do it in the next bit, and then I'll redesign this and stick red in there somewhere. And finally, we have... Impeccable timing. This is just sort of the removal spell. Basically, we're, we're tending to sort of focus on little things here and there and go with it. Um, basically, we have a lot more uh, removal in the sideboard and stuff like that, and that's how we're going to play it. So, moving on to the land base. So, in terms of jewels, we're obviously running a four off of the new Glacial Fortress. Two off of Meandering River and four off of Irrigated Farmland. Benefit with this is that, of course, it gives us card draw late game if we need it. We then have eight planes and five islands. This should sort of enough to curve out the deck quite nicely. We have a lot more white than we do blue, and the benefit is a lot of our white gets cheaper from the monuments. So moving on to the sideboard, ladies and gentlemen. We are really obviously this is in the time before the meta comes out and all this sort of thing. So again, this is best guess work. I am trying my best, people. Trust me, I really am trying. But this is sort of a sideboard that I'm thinking of running because I think it will work quite nicely. So to begin with, I'm running a two off Sentinel Tournament. I know I keep touting this at you, but dear lord, this is a better crook of condemnation. It really is. And you get a scry off it, so why not run it? We then have, moving on, we have the three off of Fragmatize. Uh, this hits a lot of artifacts and enchantments that are currently running around in the former. Yes, there are more expensive enchantments. I know people are running them. Um, so I'm kind of hesitant to put, take these out. We then have a two off of Gideon of the Trials. Uh, benefit with this is that, of course, if your opponent's going uh, aggro heavy, you can bring in Gideon to allow yourself um, an alternate sort of stalemate where they're going to have to focus on Gideon and remove him. We then have a single copy of Oketra's Last Mercy. Uh, benefit with this is, of course, that we can put ourselves back up to 20 life. And our opponent's got to work twice as hard to try and beat the deck. We then have a two-off of Settle the Wreckage. Uh, the reasons why I am running this is that I'm currently playing with around it in my modern token deck. And to some relative degree of success, um, it's all about timing it right. Of course, yes, you are going to ramp your opponent, and yes, this is standard, and they are going to have basics in their deck. But uh, against some of the more controlling matchups, you obviously won't bring this in, but it's mainly against the mono red aggro deck, which, let's be quite frank, is still going to be running around the format and still a pain in the bum. So, moving on to the last few cards of the sideboard, we are running a two off of Dusk and Dawn benefit with this is that we can obviously board wipe and generally keep a lot of our creatures relatively safe if favorable winds is out then we have to sort of make do and sacrifice where we do but worst case scenario we can get quite a few of our creatures back out of the bin with dawn and finally we are running a three off of negate benefit with this is of course against controller matchups uh we, there is going to be a lot of spot removal coming in to remove our monuments our anointed processions and various other bits and bobs so why not bring in the gates to try to help protect our little bits of combo here and there where we can 
and that is it for another deck tech tuesday um i this is a deck that i am actually gonna get built and i've pretty much got all the pieces already which is quite sweet i've only got to go out and get a couple of a catchers the jace cutting castaway and legions landing and bits and bobs like that of course i am going to crack open my booster box on the channel soon uh so please 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 stay tuned for that on also, we are nearly at the 300 subscriber mark, and oh my god, I cannot believe you guys uh, are showing so, so much love like that. Um, we are going to have to do a giveaway at 300 subs, so uh, please spread the word. Let's get the channel there as soon as we can. Um, ideally, before I go away, Christmas would be lovely, and that way I can send a prize out before I go. That would be great. And yeah, so that is going to be it for this week's Deck Tech Tuesday. I have been your host Jordan and this has been Token Doc Deck. Please see the description box for the link to the MTG Goldfish where you can find it. And that has been it for me guys. Signing off. Catch you guys later. Thank you for watching the video. Please remember to hit that like button. It supports the channel for free. Uh, also subscribe. And remember if you don't want to miss any videos, hit the bell icon right next to the subscribe button. Thank you for watching again. Goodbye.